I'm starting my second video um, with um, focus on bundles in the Stampin' Up! catalog. And this bundle is the Posted For You um, and Festive Post, which is, um, and I showed these um, last yesterday in, um, when I made card number one. So um, this was card number one that I made, but I used the wrong colors here. Um, I mean, this is mint macaron, but this is pool party instead of mint macaron. So, and I used um, petal pink it, for um, the pink one. And that was, I believe, the wrong color. I went back and looked at the picture that I printed. And my printer is light, um, but I redid um, the card. And it's much better as far as, um, that could be a pool party, the whole card pool party, but this one is mint macaron. I use the mint macaron DSP finally, and, um, and I use blushing bride. So, um, I think it's a better color combination. And then I added these, um, self-adhesive, um, sequins from the, um, artistry blooms, um, in the, in the annual catalog, I, I have them. So I'm going to start, um, what I'm determining as card number two now. And, um, this is my postcode for the month of December. If, um, anyone is interested in ordering from me, um, I have a workshop started. You can, um, you can order and um, I am offering um, a drawing to put your name in a drawing. And I will be offering um, raffle prizes. And there will be a first, second, and third. So if you choose to um, go to Lindell's cardescape.stampinup.net, and I did not put that on here. Um, let me pull out. I think I have something that I can use to reinforce that. Let's see. Um, this is my host code, like I said. And then this is my information. And there you have it. Um, Lindell's card escape dot net. Um, I have a blog as well. Um, this may be, you can't see it maybe. Let's see if I can turn this light off for a moment and stop the glare. Okay, there we go. There you go. Oh, I turned that light off and um, I'm gonna turn it back on now. So that's what we have and that is my host code for December. So let's, um, turn my light back on. So this is the card number two that I want to make. And um, I took a guess at um, some of the colors. Um, I, I got what I thought were the right colors. And um, the background stamping I did not do. I'm not sure um, without looking if that is a background stamp or what it is. But I, I did a background, but I did not do the dots. So that part, I'm not real sure. Um, I'm not real sure what that is. And I didn't see a recipe for it. So let's put that aside. And I did do a sample, not using that background. I used the um, In Good Taste um, designer series paper for my background. And I wasn't happy with that at all. That was way, way, way too busy, and um, I didn't like it. I also used some of the crystal, crystal effects, I believe it's called, and put some diamond dust on them for for little um, for a little sparkle. 
But on this card that I'm going to make, I'm going to use those Artistry Blooms sequins again, I think. So we're going to make this as a slimline card, so it's a different, um, a different sizing. And the in, on the inside is pretty simple. Um, it's a happy birthday a little bit late. And I mentioned in yesterday's video, that er, video number one, that I wanted to do some birthday cards. So um, I'm going to do this sentiment differently as well. I'm going to do the sentiment, which is sending love your way. And it's all one piece. And I'm going to do that one piece. One, I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to cut it and fussy cut it and do that. Um, I'm going to do it one piece. I think it'll be a little easier to do. So here we go. So I have, um, I have a strip here that I will use for the sentiment. And I think it's, um, it's enough. Uh, maybe it's this one, three quarters. It's a three quarter inch, um, size. And I think that will just fit the sentiment. Yes. So three quarter and by whatever length this is, then, um, that's for the sentiment on the front and that will be cut. This piece is what I'm going to use for the bridge. I call it the bridge that will, um, that I will put these, all of these two, um, in order to place them onto the mat. Um, I found it was a little hard there on dimensionals. So it was a little difficult. So I decided, I'm not sure how it was done at Stampin' Up, but that's what I did. And they'll, I'll adhere them first to this in position and then they'll have dimensionals on them and that'll go down. So I think that'll work better. So that's what that little piece is for. And then these are scraps for, um, I forgot one thing, the vellum, hold on. Uh, you would think doing it two nights in a row, I would not do that. So um, I'm gonna use a, um, a small piece. Well, I'm going to use a piece of vellum that that um, is a two and a quarter punch. So let's just go ahead and punch that out now. This is in the catalog, in the annual catalog, the two and a quarter punch. So that way we have that done out of the way. Um, and I'll go back now and show you um, the stamp sets. I forgot to do that, even though you, they were on my last video, but you might not have seen that. Posted for you is the stamp set that is the bundle. And the bundle includes the stamp set and this punch that looks like a postage stamp. And there you have, that's a party light sticker. Well, uh, Sandy, I was looking at candles. Um, so that is the bundle and you get that at 10% off. Um, out of the, the catalog. And then in the um, mini catalog that expires January 4th, this set was brought on. This is a cling set. So that means it's a red rubber, red rubber set. And this set coordinates with this punch as well. And it is a photopolymer set. And it's got some really neat little things to make, you know, to, to use the postage stamp punch for. This can be used for a lot of other things. Um, it, it's a great, um, it's a great perfect size for, um, for doing a sentiment and, and punching out just a simp, you know, put a simple sentiment on, on a card and punching it out. So, um, the other stamp set that I used is because I was doing birthdays. Now, yesterday I used the happy birthday from the posted for you on that card. I, um, I did use the happy birthday, um, here, but I'm going to, today I'm using the sending love your way, which is what's on this card, but I'm putting inside the card, happy little bit late birthday. And I'll do that, stamp that in blushing bride on the white, 
um, Whisper White cardstock. So the other pieces that we'll need in our base is eight and a quarter by seven, and I scored it at three and a half. I have written three and a quarter here, but three and a half. And then I went inside and I just wanted to see what that postage, that that um, canceled postage uh, stamp would look like as a background. Um, the piece that's going to go in here, the layered piece, is eight by three and a quarter. And that's going to go in here. And like I said, the um, happy birthday, little bit late, or happy little bit late birthday is going to go in here. So um, I think that'll be cute. And then um, the top layers, and this is the one that I'm going to stamp with that cancel, postage canceled. This is um, the same cardstock, Blushing Bride, and it's eight by three and a quarter to leave us um, that border that we need. Um, and I think in the picture, this was elevated. I believe this was elevated on dimensionals. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do that or not. I'm not real sure. So that is, and then this will be the focal piece that, that the postage stamps will go on. And it is seven and a half by two and three quarters. So we are going to start first and stamp. This mat with Blushing Bride. And I'm going to be using, um, oh, I didn't go with, with, sorry, wait a minute, we have to finish. I didn't finish. All of these are scrap pieces that will the postage stamp will, will cut on. And um, there's a Daffodil Delight, and we will use Daffodil Delight ink. Um, granny Apple Green, and we'll use Granny Apple Green ink. Melon Mambo, and we'll use Melon Mambo ink. And I wasn't sure what the picture had, if it was Balmy Blue or Seaside Spray. I decided to do Balmy Blue and the ink, Blushing Bride, and of course the Blushing Bride ink, and Melon Mambo, and the Melon Mambo ink. So the that's what we're gonna do um, our stamping with to use the postage stamp. We'll be using um, as well um, our snips from the catalog, um, our tools that, that we need, um, a bone folder, um, take your pick tool, multi-purpose adhesive. I have um, glue dots and um, mini as well as um, regular size dimensionals. I have my own um, pick, which is not a Stampin' Up! product, but it's a very handy product, thanks to a friend, Julia. And I have run out of Stampin' Seal Plus. Shame on me. But I had some bonus coupons and I ordered um, my Stampin' Seal Plus. So tonight, for the benefit of the video, I'm going to use regular Stampin' Seal, but Stampin' Seal Plus is the go-to. And I'll use, um, like I said, the, the liquid adhesive, which is also sold. Um, and then the sequins are from Artistry Blooms. We'll use those, and they are self-adhesive. And the colors, I think, um, they're not the same colors as I'm using, but they will coordinate quite well. Um, I feel like they're gonna go nicely. So the, they're, they're really, really, really pretty colors. And, and I just think when you lay out all these colors and you, um, oh, what happened to that? I lost a, did anybody see that happen? Oh no, here it is, sorry. Okay, they're, they're back to back so they wouldn't get stuck on each other, but 
I got them stuck anyway. So see, they're really pretty, really pretty sequins. So we'll use those. And um, I will be using Whisper White Twine. And I did, um, the wrap around twine was um, 26 inches. And then I did another 15 inches for a double bow to put on, to put on that. Um, I think that's it. Um, other than our stamp blocks and um, I have all my stamps loaded on the blocks. So we have a block H. We have um, two block C's. We have two block D's. And we have two block B's. So we have a lot of blocks, but that's the way it is. So now I'm going to do this background um, with the um, Blushing Bride. Let's clear away some of these things so we can work. And let me get um, a piece of scratch paper for any stamping off because we will stamp off a stamp off of this um, to cover it because I want, especially the outer edges because that's really all that's going to be seen are the outer edges. So I'm in camera range and it's a very cold night. It was a cold night last night, but tonight it's not quite as cold. Um, I think the cool finally got to us here in South Carolina. There was some snow at our friends in Tennessee day before yesterday or in the evening. And um, up in the mountains where the leaves were changing that I wanted to go see or went to see Asheville, North Carolina. They had a little snow, but that was just dusting and didn't last, I'm pretty sure. Um, we should not be getting any of that. So there we go. I'm going to do that um, as background. And uh, there again, it's not a lot, but I'm thinking maybe I should fill it in so that, oh, I overstamped. Um, I have a halo here, so that's a no no. Uh, kind of make a border here with the word special delivery. That's all that will be seen around the edge or quarter inch. A lot of it won't, won't be seen. And special delivery happens to be at top and bottom of, of the circle. So that makes it easy to get it on there all the way around. This is probably way too much, but it's gonna be covered. So let's hope. Um, that will be all good. And I will be using uh, also, I use the stamp and scrub to clean my stamps. We do have a chamois, um, but I like the stamp and scrub and um, the stamp and mist. I just um, squirt that stamp and scrub. I keep it clean, squirt it with some stamp and mist and clean the stamps right off. And they're ready to go again. Okay, since we have the Blushing Bride out, let's do our Blushing Bride postage stamp. And um, they were lined up in a certain order as far as the way these little, um, these little postage stamps were. And I'm trying to, I'm just going to, um, uh, I think um, I'm going to stamp it with the floral, not the birds, but the floral image. So this is a floral image and we're going to do, so this is called Tone on Tone. Um, I'm stamping the Blushing Bride cardstock with Blushing Bride ink and it shows like that. So I want to open my stamp and scrub over here so I can clean. And there again, a lot don't use this anymore, but I really love it. Wet one side and one side is dry. 
you clean your stamp off and it's just done. So um, I'll keep it handy over here. We're done. No, we're not done with the Blushing Bride. We want to stamp the inside sentiment. And that is the happy little bit late birthday. And I tend to, to be a late birthday wish wisher. So uh, a belated birthday card comes in handy for me. I don't mean to be, but it happens. So there we have happy birthday, a little bit late, a little bit. So that's all with our blushing bride. We can put that aside. And now let's see, we stamped, let's stamp, let's stamp the melon mambo, mel, mango melody, mel, mango melody with we did the flower for that one. Let's do the birds in the branches. Okay. Simple. Um, let's now do the f a flower in balmy blue. I, I'm, I don't know how they were done. Um, I don't recall how they were done. Let's see. Um, balmy blue. They're showing on their card. Well, you know what? Let's look at our card. Let's just do it the way we did it here. Um, I'll have to reverse the daffodil and the melon mambo. No, I don't. It really doesn't matter but let's do it the way my card is done and save ourselves. Um, I, th I Then I know the placement without having to worry about it. So I did flowers on the Melon Mambo. So see, the cardstock was good to flip. Just flip it and do what I needed to do. So that's the Melon Mambo. Um, birds were on, <laughs> I did it, did it totally wrong. Birds are on the Blushing Bride. So let's put the birds on the Blushing Bride. Okay. All righty. I'll keep those two stamps over there ready to go. Okay, those two are done. Um, my next stamp pad is Melon Mambo. Let's do that with the birds. That's what's showing. That's what I did this other card with. And we want to just follow that routine. That way I know that I'm doing... That's kind of how I cased it in the catalog. And so that's what, how I want to keep it. Our next one is Granny Apple Green, and that is a flower, which makes sense. Green growing flower. Okay, so these are here, and here's our flower, and our granny apple green, I'm still in here. Good, good, good. And last, we have Daffodil Delight. No, we don't. We have Balmy Blue as well. So Daffodil Delight. And that's the birds in the branches. I think I need to ink my Daffodil Delight. I need to re-ink this pad. 
Let's see. It's okay. Um, it's a little. It needs needs some ink. And a balmy blue last. And the use the flower to do that. Too. Okay. Yeah, that one. I need to re ink that pad as well. So it's wise to. I will probably take those all tomorrow and work on them. Or tonight before I go to bed, I'll, um, I'll re ink some of these pads so they'll be ready to go. Okay, now we're going to take the postage stamp punch and we're simply going to punch these little guys out and hopefully I have enough to hold on to if not there's a way to do it that I'll show you okay Yeah, if I make that work, I'm, I'm good. I am good, good, good. Oops, oops. <laughs> I, I would make, I would have your scrap pieces a little bit bigger. Okay, so then what happens is I take a scrap here. Let's find the scrap. And I'm going to cut a piece of it about so long because I might need more the scissors here, here. Um, put some adhesive on it. Stick this little puppy just to the edge of it. Just enough to hold it. To get it in there. To position it. And I think my, um, my paper is too... That's why it wouldn't go down. I almost had it by shaking it, but um, my paper was too um, too de deep to go in. So then we just put it in like so. Punch. And the little piece that stuck to it, we just pull it off. And that one's done. And we can use this again. Let's see, this one's probably the same way, yeah. Um, make sure that you make your scraps big enough to have a, to be able to hold on to them. Otherwise, you're gonna be playing like this game. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the same. So I'm doing this out of the camera probably, but let's show you. I learned this a long time ago. I mean, a couple of years ago. Because I was really frugal with paper. More frugal than I really needed to be. And I wound up needing extra assistance to put my pieces in the punch. And some of the punches were harder to do than others, so this just is fine. So we'll punch them all out. And the stamp, like I said, you can see 
it's perfect. The stamp itself is perfect for the um, for the punch. It, it makes a. If I could hold still, we'd be in good shape. Okay, that's. Uh, oh, I did that down a little low. Um, no, wait a minute. No, I didn't. Remember, I had stamped flowers on the back of this. This is what we wanted, so it's not low. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so we have those done. We can put our stamp away. We have our our vellum two and a quarter inch circle that you saw me punch. So let's um, let's construct this card. The first thing we'll do is use liquid adhesive, I think. I, I was going to put this on dimensionals, but mm, I, ch I, I, I think um, based on, let's see, let's get this pink posted out of here and see. I don't think I will. I think I'm going to leave it on, uh, I mean, I'm going to use a liquid adhesive and adhere it down. And I'll probably try to use more liquid adhesive than I do the, um, the tape runner because I don't have the stamp and seal plus. And the slimline card, the down, the downfall to me is that it takes a whole piece of cardstock. I mean, it, 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 it ruins a whole piece of cardstock. You can't in our, in our normal A, A2 size cards, you can get two cards out of one piece of cardstock, but with the slim line, it's, it's just a bigger, it, it takes, it takes all of it. So let's put the inside. Oh, I see a smudge. I had ink on a finger or something. I see a smudge here. Right here. So, I'm going to stamp. I have one more stamp that I have not used. And I think I'm going to stamp no, I'm going to stamp. Well, let's just do the postage, the canceled postage. Uh, where is it? On here and um, and the blushing bride. Let me find it here. Sorry about that. And I'll try to make sure I get it on that um, the spot where my ink is, where where I have a smudge. Hey, da 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 da. Did not. I did it. Did not get it there, but that's okay. It's handmade. I've heard of other demonstrators say that people appreciate it anyway because it's handmade. What do you think? So let's take take your pick tool. And these are pretty flat. These, um, let's just, so it'll go okay on there. Mm. And let's just go ahead and put one here. Okay. That's how I solved that. And I think it'll be okay. I There's a smudge here too. I must have, I don't have any, oh, I do have a little bit on the edge of my fingers. Doggone it. That's just what happens. So, okay. So we've glued the mat down. Let's now 
put our focal piece down, our whisper white, regular whisper white. It's time for me to get new glue out. Almost. And I think we're okay there. Yeah, we're good. Now, the way I did this was interesting because I wasn't sure. I mean, when you start laying them out on here and you have one, you have one down and one under that and it's like, okay, so I guess I could have done two down this far apart, but I just, um, I wasn't, wasn't sure. So, you know, I, sh I, I didn't eyeball it like I should have. So that's why I came up with the, with the, I called it the brace a brace to put them to and then that goes down you never see it but um the daffodil delight is the first color but the where's my granny apple did i not punch it out did you see me not punch my granny apple out oh dear Oh, where did that little puppy go? Card number two. I did stamp it. Oh, here it is. Whew. You guys are probably sitting there looking and uh, saw it and I didn't. So, okay, let's see. Let's do the granny apple. Here, I'm kind of trying to get a eyeball. Um, the only thing is, I think this went. I think I wanted to do this this way, and then I put the melon mom. I mean the um, mango melody. This under and this over. And this. So they just have to come down a tiny bit. But if I put them on this bridge, um, then I can line them up the way I need them to line up. So what I did with the other card is I started by putting dimensionals on the back of all of them, top and bottom. That way my string, my, um, my twine can go through, um, the middle of them. It won't matter that they're slanted. After I get the dimension, after I get the dimensionals on them, then I can, um, uh, not take the covers off, but I can then place them with glue in the center, the center part, I'll put the glue. So, this is probably, I could be making this more complicated than it has to be, um, I'm sure. There are those out there that will say that I was doing it wrong, but I think it's it's mine this way. So um, I am casing. It it was in our bundle focus um, brochure. I mean, our our um, that we could to, to in order to try you know to show um, our bundles. And this was the bundle I wanted to focus on because. It is the very easiest thing, I think, to get for somebody that's really starting out even. Um, it's a perfect bundle. 
um, the stamp set, even if you don't get the the holiday one, um, the posted for you and the punch, you can do so much with that. You don't have to have a whole lot of, you know, all you need, you need a trimmer. You need a Stampin' Up! trimmer, which, um, or you need a trimmer. Um, I would not take anything for my Stampin' Up! trimmer, and I just had some rewards, and I purchased another one. But, um, you know, to cut your paper. Other than that, your cards, you cut your cardstock, you, um, you can, you could, uh, the sky's the limit with making cards with this. I mean, really, really, really tr and truly, I, I believe that. So, this is our bar. And we know that we have to get this on in the center. We have to get this on here. So, let's go ahead and I want to make sure. So, uh, am I out of screen? I am, aren't I? Let's move us up a little bit. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. About that. Okay. I don't need that right now. Um, blushing Bride. And that is under... Gonna go right there. I need to get three more on here. That's gonna be um, not as easy as I thought, but they do overlap, so um, like Flushing Bride and then the Melon Mambo goes under the Mango Melody and I might need a little bit I'm gonna use this strip that I cut for my sentiment. Um, I'll try the sentiment on this other one <laughs> because I need more. I need more. Um, I need more space. So let's go ahead and um, let's put let's put adhesive right here. And bring this down in the center. And then we're going to do this adhesive in the center. Liquid adhesive. And you. So that takes care of that side. The blushing bride has. Go oh, they'll easily slip under because we only have. We haven't done anything. Um, but put center piece of, of adhesive. We haven't taken the backing off of our others. So I think we'll be good here. And this, the beauty, I can cut this down if it's too, I mean, it is too long. I know that. Melon mambo. I mean, mango melody. I guess we have some M's going here, don't we? Mango Melody. We want to make sure it's there. Um, this one we want to go under. And then barely. Boy, we. I needed all that. I might have spaced them too much, but apart, but that's okay. Let's just bring that and then this. All we need is just the tip to fit. And we're good. Okay. And I'm using my silicone mat for this um, to, to place adhesive um, because this way it gets on the mat, doesn't get on the paper, except one spot there where I went off the mat, and that will clean up really easy. So now the thing we want to do is remove, um, I'm gonna do, take your pick tool. This is perfect, perfect to, to remove the backings. You just, whoops, you just simply lift them all up. And 
and I think this will be fine. Let's put those in the garbage now. And then here we go, here we go. Now, I shouldn't have taken the backing off yet of these. <sighs> Tell me why. Because I haven't put my twine on yet. So I'm gonna lay this down. The beauty of this is the silicone mat will allow me to do that. So I made, um, I said two lengths of twine. I think I said 26 inches and 15 inches. Um, uh, you don't know if you really need that much. Um, that's something, that's a matter of what you want to do. Um, and actually, um, these are two 24 inch pieces, but, um, no, I'm going to cut the 15, I'm going to cut, uh, 15 inches and, and show you to make a double bow. If I, I have one made already in case I struggle. So let's put this down. And remember, we're going to have this, and I still now need to stamp the sentiment on um, on this strip, and I hope it will fit. But um, we need we need um, we need this down because the um, thread is going to go over over the piece of vellum, and I'm going to center put a center dot. I think it'll be covered by the sentiment. Won't have to worry about it too much, I don't think. And these are um, our glue dots and they're excellent for so this puts it about right, I think. So that glues to that. Okay, now we're gonna Bring this up. And I may have this wrong, but it needs to wind twice and it, it will. Okay, it will. And I'm going to tape it on the back just in case you didn't know what I'm doing. Um, I, I did it before I, I wound it and tied it. And I struggled a bit with trying to place it the way I wanted it. So what I wound, what I wound up deciding is I'm going to use stamp and seal plus would work nicely to do this, but I'm going to use some tape. Um, But I don't want that tape to go on my dimensionals. So let's bring it up. This is, um, even though I made one already, last night I had not made the card yet. I made it with you. So um, I made another one later, but okay. So this piece of twine and see this twine gets into these little grooves. So it tends to, we want to get it placed the way we want it because then it'll stick in the groove. And I didn't want, I did not want the twine to get on the dimensionals because I want them to totally adhere to the card. I mean, just didn't want that to happen. So let's cut that piece of tape. And take it off. I don't want tape on the dimensionals to stop their stick. Okay. Now. So now we have, we're at the point where we can place this in a nice that I think 
I'm doing it correctly. So now then, like I said, what I decided to do with the other twine, if I can find it, and it probably went flying somewhere. My mercy. My, 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 my mercy. Okay. Well, a tying a double bow was, was my plan with that extra twine. And, um, oh, here it is. Okay. So to do that, um, you just double it over and then you want to just make your little bow like so and um, you want to make sure that it's like so and then just cut this um, this double loop so you have four tails and you're gonna cut them and then we're gonna place it with a glue dot a rolled over glue dot um, rolled on itself and I'll use my tweezers for that because I really I really like them I mean I had trouble learning to use these tweezers. I only knew tweezers that were apart like this, and then you squeezed and they went together. So I had to learn to squeeze them and open them, and these will hold a piece of um, some thread tied together while you tie a bow if you need it. Um, so I'm gonna just roll the glue dot over on itself, make it really tiny, a little roll, and we're gonna put it on this twine. Uh, and then we're going to put it right down on this. And now we're gonna stamp our sentiment since we didn't do it in Blushing Bride. And we're gonna pray that it'll fit. I think it won't, but because this is a little smaller at the three quarters piece that I used behind, behind these um, postage stamps would have worked. But let's see, I don't wanna put my head in here, but I need to get above it. Hopefully my blushing bride doesn't need to, let's see. I have to look at it. How cockeyed is it? Ah, that's good. That is very fine for me. I'm good with that. Now, I'm going to take my paper snips. And I like to do this with it. And I like to do this. Now that's just an eyeballing it. Um, I didn't do measurements. I didn't do anything special. Um, but I am also going to cut it closer to the words, I believe. Uh, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have slanted it yet, but oh well. So it's a little cockeyed, but it's not the worst. So I'll take some um, mini, we'll take some mini dimensionals and I'll use the take your pick tool. And oops, uh, didn't mean to do that exactly. Well, that is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, we want to put a mini dimensional on here. I'm going to take my tweezers. I think I'm better with the tweezers. Oops. I 
think I used those last night. And and I'll put um, I'll put a nice row of them because I feel like um, if it goes through the mail, it'll it'll it won't crunch so bad and it it won't give and it'll it it, it won't buckle. It should stay um, it should stay nice and firm without getting real weavy and wavy. And for good measure, I'm going to put one more because I guess you can always have enough, but oops. So let's take the backs off of these. I can't wait to get rid of these nails. This is um, powder gel uh, over my nails, nails, and the guy did them really thick. I talked about this the other day. They're too thick. I don't like it. I just do not like like it at all. Now, I'm not happy with the way this comes down, but it's um, it's okay. It's okay. Because our vellum is flat, we could do what we did. And now, let's see what we can do with our little pretties here. Our little pretties. I'm excited. This is my second video. I'm focusing on the Posted For You bundle. And there are four cards I'm gonna make with this bundle and four videos. So there, this is my second. And pool party, this would be more of a pool party color, I think, but um, uh, Let's just go ahead and put one up here. Let's put a daffodil one here, or sort of a daffodil. Um, what shall we put over here? Let's see, we have blue on the end. I kinda like these. Let's put one of these here. So I did one, two, three, four, five. So I did five. And I'll let that be. Um, that means there's two of one color because there's only four colors here. Put these away. Um, and the way I store them is I put the slick back back to back. And they should, for some reason, there's some sticky on one of, oh, that's this one, has some sticky on it. But anyway, that's that's what I do. Makes it, um, makes, wow, that fell off. Makes them store nicer and come apart nicer if they don't have gum on the back, gummy stuff on the back. Okay, we're almost done here. The one that fell off, um, what are we gonna do with that? Um, it fell off, so it has no sticky. I have a little tiny glue bottle of um, some not stampin' up glue, and I'm gonna go ahead and put, um, maybe not, I don't know where that sequin went. If I've lost it, that's okay, because I didn't really wanna put it on there but I didn't want to waste it. <laughs> so, so I thought, well, I'll just use it anyway. And um, it's gone, so we don't have to do it. We don't have to deal with that. So this was a tiny, uh, this is like glitter glue from, I got from Amazon. So that's it.
What do you think? Sending love your way. Happy little bit late birthday. I, I wouldn't stamp this background on the next card. I wouldn't do that. This is okay, but I think um, a different type stamp, that's way too much on there. And the, the special delivery is not really showing, so... Um, so that defeated the purpose the way it turned out. Um, I think to find a background stamp, an, another stamp with some um, with some dots on it, or any we ha we have just a lot of different stamps in this other um, in this other festive post stamp set. There's stars here. I don't know how that would look. Or actually, you could just edge with these maybe with these flowers i'm not sure if that would look good either but um there's always something or you could leave it blank um and not do anything so there you have it um thanks for watching hopefully you'll give me some likes and maybe some um spreads around and um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'll do all of them at one time. I'll upload all of them to my YouTube. And um, you could go to my YouTube channel by searching for Lindell's Card Escape or Lindell Ivy. I think I'm still an Ivy on my YouTube channel. Um, I have a blog and I showed you that um, um, Lindell's Card Escape dot blog I believe it is and um, then there's my Facebook page and one thing that I want to do I didn't do last night I want to talk to you about something that's kind of become near and dear to me and it's um, my macular degeneration um, it is progressing and um, had I been given something like this six or seven years ago had I known um, I may have caught it early enough to be more treatable than it is now um, this is um, an Amesler grid um, that's given and and maybe you already if anybody that's watching maybe knows what this is but you um, you put this I put this up on my bathroom mirror is where it goes and um, in in the morning after I've gotten my face washed and my teeth brushed and everything and I'm good awake, um, I put my glasses on and I cover one eye and I look at this dot in the center. And if there's, um, and, and, and for me now, um, you have no idea. Um, all of these lines are crooked when I look at with my left eye. Not all of them, but most of them. They just go jagged, jagged, jagged like this. When I look with my right eye, that's something I have to discuss with my doctor, with my retinal specialist um, on my next injection, and I might should call them and discuss it sooner. But um, there's a big blotch right here um, when I look with my right eye, which tells me that it's possible that eye has gotten wet and it is bleeding. So the injections are for that. They won't help the dry, but they will help. So, um, you, you know, like I said, I tape it to the window. Um, you can get these. Um, if you can't find one somewhere, um, you can like message me and I'll be glad to mail you uh, a copy of it. But these are some of the things that happen and um, that, that can happen. I have this now, this type of um, lines really bad. I don't have any failing ones. Um, I don't see any black blotches. I see black blotches at night, in the night, when I get up to go to the bathroom in the dark with my eyes open. I mean, if I look, you know, look toward the light or what have you, I have black blotches sometimes, big ink blotch looking in both eyes. So that, but, but I don't have that on the grid when I look at the grid. So, um, Peripheral vision is um, n n not 
affected. It's your on site. It's your straight on sight vision. So that's why it's so pertinent to get it to try and catch it early and get it treated um, so that you can drive. Um, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, nighttime's hard to drive anyway because um, I have lots of halos and what have you. But anyway, I wanted to pass that on and share it because um, it's not a joke, macular degeneration. It's there, and um, I think it, you know, um, it, it's something I would have never thought that would happen to me. Um, it, it, it makes me feel um, real um, uh, handicapped to some degree, and um, it's hard. So anyway, um, I'm glad that I can still craft and make cards, and I'm going to let everybody go, go now. You probably already left, but anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.